Hi, everyone. Welcome to the July 2022 Third Party Update webcast. My name is John Cassell, Senior Solutions Architect with Sixth Sense, and today I'll be covering some of the most popular third party products that have received updates since last month. I do want to mention that even though we'll be covering just third party applications in this webcast, we will still be using the Microsoft Patch Tuesday, that is the second Tuesday of the month, as our reference point. Most manufacturers actually have no guaranteed release cadence to rely on. However, Microsoft has been using the second Tuesday of the month for over a decade now, and some manufacturers have also followed suit, such as Adobe. Before we start, let's briefly discuss what a vulnerability is versus a patch. A vulnerability is a bug or misconfiguration in a product, application, or operating system that, if exploited, allows that product or system to be compromised by an attacker. A patch, however, or update, is instead a piece of software published by the vendor of that product or system to resolve the vulnerability. With that being said, not all vulnerabilities can be patched, and not all patches resolve vulnerabilities. If a vulnerability exists in a product or system, but no patch or workaround is available, then the vulnerability is considered a zero-day zero exploit. When it does come to assessing uh, a patch as well as a vulnerability or either aspect of it, there are going to be six categories uh, here at Six Cents. We call this our six score. Now, this can come either from the vendor as a recommendation, the industry score, which we call the CVSS score. Again, if the product itself has been weaponized, then that, of course, is going to increase the risk. If the industry was already publicly aware of the vulnerability, but maybe nothing exists yet for it to resolve it, then it is publicly aware, as well as other mitigations, workarounds, uh, countermeasures, we call them, can also be provided that may not actually involve a patch. The last factor, however, which is going to increase risk, of course, is based on your environment. If we're talking about one machine, we're talking about 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, that will also change the score overall. A risk is not gonna be too high if we have one device with that vulnerability, but of course there is still a risk. The third party products we'll be discussing today have all received updates since last month and all resolve some sort of vulnerability as well as some zero day exploits, unfortunately. Also, all products mentioned do have advisories from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency to update as soon as possible. First, Adobe dropped a number of updates across various products. Adobe issued advisories across four separate product lines between Windows and Mac OS. These products include Adobe, or, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader, Character Animator, Photoshop, and RoboHelp. Among all products, uh, Adobe resolved 27 separate vulnerabilities, with uh, most unfortunately being critical in nature. The first, Acrobat and Reader, received updates um, to resolve 22 separate vulnerabilities, with 15 of them alone getting CVSS scores of 7.8. Of course, CVSS is uh, from 0 to 10, with 10 being the highest risk. And the rest getting a lower important rating with a CVSS score of 5.5. The various categories include access of uh, uninitialized pointer, out-of-bounds read, type confusion, and use after free flaws. The latest release for Acrobat and Reader includes Acrobat and Reader DC, Classic 2020, and Classic 2017 as well. So if you're using these products, be sure to update. It's also worth noting that Adobe does provide a priority rating um, along with their security bulletins. And for this one, Acrobat and Reader received a lower priority of two. Now, lower is not better here. Adobe's bulletin, uh, in their bulletin, lower is actually more concerning, uh, and this means that if left unpatched, the products are at elevated risk of being exploited. Typically, Adobe stamps their product updates with a higher priority of three, uh, with lesser chance of being exploited. The next three products all received a less concerning priority of three. Character Animator received an update for Windows and Mac OS to resolve two critical vulnerabilities with CVSS scores of 7.8. These include fixes for heat-based buffer overflow and out-of-bounds read. Photoshop received an update to resolve two additional vulnerabilities, with one also being critical in nature and affecting Photoshop 2021 and 2022. And lastly, Adobe RoboHelp resolved one flaw regarding a cross-site scripting vulnerability with, fortunately, a CVSS score of 6.5, not as high as the rest. Google Chrome has had three separate releases for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux since last month. 
The first update uh, to Chrome version 103 dropped June 21st and resolved 14 documented security flaws with one of those flaws being critical and two others having high severity. Two of these uh, are regarding use after free issues and base and interest groups, while the other high severity flaws regarding type confusion in the V8 JavaScript engine. Fortunately, the second update of Chrome, which dropped on June 27th, had no security fixes to highlight and was a minor update for Windows only. The third, however, and most concerning update dropped on the 4th of July, resolved four documented flaws, but with one of them being a zero day exploit. This vulnerability tracked the CVE 2022-2294 is regarding a heat buffer overflow issue in the browser's WebRTC engine, which if exploited could lead to arbitrary code execution. As per usual, Google withheld specific details uh, about the vulnerability as they typically wait until most clients have updated to the newest version of the affected product. Again, Google is aware that an exploit for this vulnerability exists in the wild and this puts Chrome at four zero day exploits in 2022. Last year, 2021, Google Chrome had 16 zero day exploits. And so far this year is looking a little bit better. However, I always mention that Chrome is by far the most popular web browser, and that makes it uh, a malicious attacker's preferred target. Regarding updating Chrome, as always, the browser should auto update for any consumers, but for administrators, also be sure to double check and update accordingly, especially if end users do not have administrative rights to their devices. I'll only mention that here, of course, that would apply to every other third-party product mentioned today. Following suit, any vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities resolved in Chrome also affect other Chromium-based browsers, such as the popular Microsoft Edge. Edge received six updates since last month's webinar with only two releases addressing Edge-specific vulnerabilities. These, of course, are additional vulnerabilities in Edge only that don't affect Chrome. The June 23rd uh, update of Edge resolved three additional vulnerabilities. The first is tracked as CVE 2022-30192, related to elevation of privilege, has a higher CVSS score of 8.3, but fortunately exploitation is less likely per Microsoft. The second and third vulnerabilities resolved are tracked as CVE 2022 and in consecutive order 33638 and 33639, both related to elevation of privilege, both also having higher CVSS scores of 7.7 .7 and 8.3 respectively, and for both exploitation is still less likely, according to Microsoft. This June release, um, as it is typical for Edge to release uh, new policies and administrator options month after month, their feature release, this release also added four new policies for administrators and also changing a timeout policy, but not a lot of changes for administrators this month. Microsoft then resolved additional product specific vulnerabilities in its June 30th release to address another elevation of privilege flaw with a CVSS score of 8.3 and fortunately also less likely to be exploited. Lastly, the July 6th release of Edge, there are actually two, but one to highlight of the two, uh, contain a fix for the same zero day exploit, of course, mentioned earlier in Chrome, which also, of course, puts Edge at elevated risk. Given that some of the Edge specific vulnerabilities are again near critical, as they have actually been for the past few months, and of course, in this release, um, or for Edge, the Chromium exploits mentioned earlier still apply, I do strongly recommend to again prioritize. Like Chrome, it should update itself, but do be sure to check. Mozilla Firefox released only two updates since last month, including an additional update for extended support release users. Mozilla first dropped a Firefox update on June 28th, bringing Firefox to version 102. This version now offers disabling automatic opening of the download panel every time a new download starts, enhancements for tracking protection, as well as 19 security fixes. Of the 19 fixes, for Firefox alone excluding extended support, Three are considered high severity and related to use after free, where navigations between XML documents may lead to a potentially exploitable crash, as well as sandbox header bypass via retargeted JavaScript. Another high severity flaw that only affects Firefox for Linux involves a potential pop-up window being resized in a way to overlay the address bar with web content, leading to user confusion or spoofing. The second update for Firefox dropped on July 6th, 
uh, to version 102.0.1, and fortunately only included a few stability fixes such as interface issues on Windows and uh, multilingual spell checking, but no security issues to highlight. Keep this one brief. Um, I always include it because it does follow suit with much of the uh, Firefox uh, updates. Uh, Mozilla Th Thunderbird also received three updates since last month, versions 91.11.0, 102.0.1 and 102.0.2, um, only resolving some minor stability issues. Unfortunately, no security fixes to highlight for this month. There are plenty of other updates that did drop. I again prioritize based on public vulnerabilities. However, there are plenty of other updates out there. These would include Amazon Workspaces, Bitwarden, various Citrix products, Dropbox, Foxit Reader, Jenkins, Malwarebytes, Notepad++, OpenSSL, Opera, SAP, Skype, Cisco WebEx, WinSCP, Wireshark, and Zoom. My monthly reminder to all administrators, please of course include third-party patching in your patch deployment process. It is not just about operating system updates. Any and all applications installed can be considered a potential vulnerability. Lastly, and fortunately for all Apple users out there, there are no security advisories since last month. If you happen to be using Mac OS, iOS, or any other Apple products, be sure to still check for software updates and apply any that may be necessary. This also includes double checking, of course, the App Store for any third-party products also installed. I hope this has been informative and useful. If you enjoy the new short form of this webcast, please contact us and let us know. If you have any further questions, concerns, or suggestions for improvement, we would love to hear it. Thank you for your time today and happy patching.